Alright, greetings. This is the Crunchy Fair, and today I will be uploading part 6 of What If Female Deku Was King Ghidorah. Now, I'm sorry for not, uplo not uploading yesterday, because uh, I was very busy yesterday with a real life, sorry about that, real life things. And I was also getting some images for other What Ifs, because I remembered from when I was doing Upper Moon 1 and Muzan, I remembered, oh yeah, I remembered I would be doing all the other uh, Moon members of the 12 Kizuki. So you got, can look out for that sometime. Anyway, let's get on to this this next part. So I believe we're on the Heroes vs. Villains training. Oh yeah, and before we start, sorry about this. Um, I did see like a lot, like one of the comments asking if they will have a kaiju, if Rodan and Izumi will have kaiju forms. Yes, they will, but it won't be sort of like, like full for like fle flesh and blood, it'll be sort of like spectral and all that. So like, it'll be like bits of their energy in made into like giant kaiju. Okay, so let's begin. So, Izumi and Rodan head out to the training area as they walk out in their hero costumes. This is what Izumi's looks like. And give me a minute. And this is Rodan's hero costume. Sorry about that. As, as they class, the rest of Class One A are asking questions about their hero costumes, with Izumi and Rodan saying that, with Rodan saying that his hero costume is made out of some hardened parts of lava, and and some bits of his hair, so that whenever he ignites himself, he. It won't burn off, and Izumi's is made. Izumi's is made from like shavings from her horns, and and uh, strands of her hair, so that it doesn't burn whenever she uses her lightning. Or if it does burn, it will regenerate. As they then begin to pull out locks for the teams, with Rodan and Izumi being. On the um hero being on the hero team, and Bakugo and Ida being on the villain team. As Bakugo and Ida would go into the building to set out their bombs, as All Might and everyone else would go into the observation room. <laughs> with Rodan then beginning to make small talk with Izumi, as he would ask her. If she has anything planned later today, as Izumi would say that she has that she'll be doing training after school after today for about an hour, and then after that she'll be free. As she'd ask why, as Rodan would get nervous and begin to start stuttering, as he would say, "Like I'm going to try and do stuttering, but I'm not that good at." Bye. Uh, sorry about that. Um, I'll try to do the stuttering because I'm already doing it right now. As Rodan would say, would you like to go out uh, sometime today after your training? With Izumi just being surprised by this, as uh, she wouldn't think Rodan would be bold enough to do that. As uh, she would say that as she immediately turn around and begin stuttering as well, as she'll say, I will think about it. As they both begin, as All Might says that the battle has started, as they would then head into the building, with Izumi sending her dragon heads toward, sending Ichi and Kevin towards the, um, look around the building for the bomb. As she has made them intangible, so if Bakugo and or Ida sees them, they won't find, they won't um, be able to hurt them. As they would see, they would uh, look, 
be moving around the building, as Kevin would end up finding the bomb, and basically is basically telepathically telling Lumi that the bomb is on the fifth floor. As he Lumi would nod her head, as Ro as the Zumi would relay this information to Rodan, as they'd then make their way for the fifth floor. As Ichi no is currently circling around looking for Bakugo, as just as Izumi and Rodan round the corner, Bakugo lets off his explosion, which Izumi uses her her time manipulation to basically slow slow it down. As she'd end up picking up Rodan, like basically throwing, basically like picking him up, uh, picking up bridal style. Why? Because I need comedy. As she would basically carry Rodan away from the explosion. As she would plop him down a couple feet away from the explosion. As she would, Izumi would then begin to move towards the explosion. To like measure it, see if she can tank it, or whether she needs to use one, or whether she needs to avoid it. As she begin to measure the explosion, as it is very big, as Izumi would think, yeah, I'm gonna need to avoid this. As she moves out of the way, we have it around the side, the other side of the wall. As the explosion would go off. As Rodan would find himself a couple meters away from the explosion, and he's only nowhere to be found. With Bakugo around the corner, as Iz as Izumi did base did punch a hole in the wall to make it look like she went through it. As the road as Bakugo would say, I finally got her out. I finally got got her out of the smash. Your next flaming turkey. As Bakugo would begin to charge towards Izumi, no, not Izumi, Rodan, with him stopping immediately, as they'd look to the side of him, as they'd see one of Izumi's dragon heads biting down on his shoulder, letting, letting off sparks of electricity, as he would yell, no, no, again, as he would immediately collapse, as, I'll say this was Ichi, yeah, it was Ichi who did it. As Ichi would let go, as he would return to his, return towards Izumi, as she would pet Ichi on the head, as she would say, "Good job, Ichi." Now we need to now to tie him up. As Kevin would come come in with the capture tape, as they would tie Izumi and Rodan would tie Bakugo up, as All Might would announce that. Bakugo Katsuki have been captured with Izumi and Rodan then heading up to the third headed up to the fifth floor as they would begin to sneak in to the building through to the room with Ida going on about his speech on being a villain as Izumi is basically fighting the urge to laugh. So she doesn't like butter out laughing like Oraka did. She's actually like holding it down, but she is smiling a lot. As Rodan is having a more difficult time than Izumi, than Izumi to not laugh. And she's basically like using two of her fingers to like, like using two of her fingers to hold his lips shut so he won't laugh. As they then sneak around <clears throat> and grab the bomb, with all my announcing that the that the hero team has won. With Ida turning around, seeing Izumi basically putting her hand on the bomb and waving at Ida, and Rodan on the floor basically dying from laughter, as like actually like a puddle of tears forming underneath him. As he's laughing, as he would say, I, I didn't expect this from a member of the e of the Ida family. Uh, uh, 
Oh, I can't breathe. And either we would crouch down and pick Bro down up and say, and as you'd say to him that he needs to stop because she's gonna end up laughing if he does if he doesn't stop. Now here's the thing: Izumi doesn't laugh often. She does. She mainly laughs when other people start laughing, which is basic, which is sort of something that kind of happens to me sometimes as well. But I, I can laugh. I can laugh. It's just that sometimes it'll just be when other people start laughing. Anyway, back to the story. Um, as Izumi, Rodan, and Ida would head to the observation room. As Bakugo is taken to recovery girl's office, as they would a as All Might would have asked, who who was the MVP of that match? As um, Momo would say, that the MVP of this mat of the match was Izumi Iz was Izumi, due to her using, due to her being smart and being able to cal being able to take out people despite. That despite that Bakugo getting the jump on her, with All Might saying that right as the day would end, with Izumi doing her training for an hour, where she would get. Now she is training with Rodan, as they would both unlock sort of like a uh, their spectral uh, kaiju forms, which sort of which Rodan looks like how he did. In King of the Monsters, and Izumi's how she looked is how Ghidorah looked in Planet Eater. As they would then call call the training off, as they'd finished it, as they would then end up going, as Rodan and Izumi would end up going out on their date. Now, Izumi and is Iz Izumi and Rodan go somewhere nice, but but affordable. So basically, basically think of anywhere, anywhere you could go, go to, and they go there on a date. And they would both end up having having a a great a great date, as they would then head back to their homes. As we will then get to the way, the beginning of the hold on sorry about that as as a uh, Sue would ask them ask Izumi and Rodan about their quirks as Rodan would say that his quirk is known as Titanus the Rodan and it basically gives him the ability the ability to fly and produce lot produce hot magma from the edges of his wings and he can withstand extreme temperatures like a volcano as Izumi would say that her quirk is Titanus Ghidorah as she explains all her quirk's abilities including including flight space and time manipulation energy draining energy draining, uh, gravity beams, and everything else. Along with her stating that her quirk is, basically puts her in her own category of the Titanus quirk gene, which is an alpha. Which, as she would expl then explain that her alpha status basically means that, that if Rodan tried to, if Rodan were to attack her or any other Titan, she could basically perform an alpha, what, what they call an alpha call, which basically causes them to basically submit to her if they aren't an alpha as well. With them finding this interesting, uh, sorry about that, finding this interesting, as they would be, as Bakugo and Todoroki would listen in. Bakugo, actually no, Bakugo and Zuko would listen in. As they would then head, make it to the USJ, where 13 gives her explanation 
on how quirks can be dangerous and have the potential to kill people. With Kirishima then saying, Wow, this you guys even have fake villains that are so manly. With Aizawa looking down, as you'd say, those aren't fake villains, those are real villains. And that is where I'm going to end this part off. I do hope you guys enjoyed it, and I do apologize for not uploading yesterday. And I will see you all next time.